Hello everyone and welcome to another Mandarin Matrix how-to video. Um, I am Eric Chitman, or Mai Lao Shi, as my students knew me. I'm excited today to talk to you about the proficiency builders and how to use them in your classroom. So we'll be talking specifically with more detail and more technicality on how it works in the classroom so you can, when you get those books or the online platform, you can start using them right away. So these, these books were designed with that spiraled approach. Um, if you've seen the graphic here, you'll see that kind of tornado looking thing where it expands outward. And so this is, a, this is symbolic of the design of these books. So the proficiency builders, the whole purpose was to move a student as they read through the books up the proficiency scale. So starting at novice low to novice mid to novice high. And so these books, the reason it's a spiral and what this means is that every book builds on the next book. So first of all, we'd really suggest to you not to just pull books out at random of these readers. They'll be a lot less useful and a lot less powerful if you just grab any random book and read it. You can do that, but the real power in these books is the system. So this Xi Tong Xing, or like the system of these books where the, the books are building on each other, that really allows a student to build proficiency. What I mean by this is that when a student reads a book, the characters within that book are only the ones they've learned before in previous books or that are new to that unit and that book. So they're not dealing with any stray random characters floating into the books. All they have is what's in the book so the students can have the confidence and they can have a strong foundation to be able to read the new vocabulary. Every single one of our uh, series, we have books that are put into units. Now a unit typically has three books and we suggest you teach a unit for about 15 days. So that's about five days per book. So within these units, all three of those books that are in that unit, they all use the same key vocabulary. So we don't introduce any new vocabulary within those three books besides the key focus words of that unit. We try not to have any random new ones appear. Now the key to that is, we know from research that the way you learn a language is by seeing a character or a word lots of different times and in different contexts. So those three different books they are showing that character appear in different words, different ci, and also different uh, contexts, different settings. So the kid can really access and absorb that language uh, in a more concentrated, have more connections. And that's always our goal is that they get more connections to that vocabulary and that's how they're going to remember it. So that's super important about how we do these units. So we're, we're going to talk specifically now about the foundation level. So that's that bottom area on the spiral. This is where we start, and so we call it foundation because this is the beginning phases. So the vocabulary we've chosen in the, in the, the foundation level, we, we've referenced YCT uh, vocabulary list, we reference frequency lists, and we also look at characters that uh, they need and often learn how to say in a classroom setting, and also the nouns we've chosen are often uh, radicals, so we're characters that appear in other characters, so kind of like the building blocks of other characters. So what you find when you get a foundation level series is you get a big book, actually it's two big books, and then a set of smaller readers. So when you start a unit in the foundation level, you're always starting with the big book. Now the big book, you'll open that up and you'll go to story one and that'll be unit one, story one. This is intended to be a read aloud. The students should not be reading these books. It's you to get the students primed and ready to read the books later on. This is the beginning phase, so they shouldn't be reading yet. So you should be reading out loud, you should be doing picture walks, so you're talking about the things in the pictures, and reading the language to get the kids ready to read. So this is a pre-reading phase, and with read-alouds like anybody would do with any kid as they're learning a language, there's lots of read-alouds that happen. Now the second book in the unit you'll find is a small reader, and it's called a da, da jia du, or a we read book. So this is based on the modeling cycle of I do, we do, you do. So the second book you'll see inside that book has black characters, red characters. The black characters are meant for the teacher to read and the red characters are for the students to read. So the students should only have to read those red characters that appear and it won't be too hard for them but they'll still be able to get through the book. And so you should be really working with them on that book but they're still getting through a story. And again with every book you should be doing picture walks to really maximize what you're getting out of the book. And that's how you can spend five days on a book, is you're doing picture walks and you're building oral language and oral vocabulary based on the topics of the books, not just what the students are reading. There should be even more oral vocabulary happening. Now the third book of the unit and foundation is called the Ziji Du, and this is an independent read. So within this book, it was really challenging, but we pulled off with really simple amounts of characters, really like 
four or five characters making a story. And so this is a, a way that the kids can open up that book and they'll be able to read everything completely independently by the end of that week. And so a student can build confidence really early on that they're able to read a Chinese book. So that's how the foundation units go. There's 10 of those units with the starting with the big book, teacher read, second smaller book with the, the we read, and then that third uh, student read. So that's foundation level. Moving on to the novice one through novice three levels, they have basically the same um, setup. It's still one unit with three books, but in those three books, there's not really a divide about the teacher read, student read, uh, and reading together. Basically in those books, um, with the student, uh, they all should be able to read this, every book by the end of the week. So the first book and the second book and the third book are essentially the same, they're just new stories. Maybe your emphasis is a little bit different and when we talk about the 15 day unit plan in a later video, you'll better understand the process of a unit. But basically there's just three books that the kids should be able to independently read by the end of that book and that, that we've set it up to do that. And it's the still same recycling and spiraled approach. Now what you see later on in the Novice 3 books, you start to see little pictures appear in the words. Those are called rebus pictures. And basically put those in so that a student is be able to read more things without, even though they don't know that character. So this, you should be giving the language uh, to the students so they can say that picture out loud as a part of the story. So it's just a way for them to expand the stories they're reading without increasing the amount of characters they have to read. Now we're moving on to the intermediate two, or intermediate one level. So intermediate one, it, it changes. We now move to one unit has just one story. And so they're kind of short chapter books. And within that chapter book, we have three chapters. So we're really trying to push kids to start be, being able to read a chapter book. Now this is uh, it, these early phases of it. So if they open a book, you'll see three different chapters. It's the same idea that within that book, it's all the same new key vocabulary. So within those books, we have these Pictionary uh, areas so they can start getting ready to understand the vocabulary. And we start each book with a really simple amount of text, just a, a few sentences, and then slowly expand from there. Now what you also see in these books is you have red characters, those are the new vocabulary. Black characters are what they've learned before. And in these books, we have actually have a new color that you haven't seen in the other books. So this gray character is a new vocabulary that typically the kids know how to say, that they understand, and, but they have not yet learned how to read it yet. Now some of them are pretty simple characters and they've probably seen it in other books. We just aren't gonna require them to know that character in, in later books. And what you'll see is that gray character below has a footnote that has the pinyin for that character. So typically they know how to say it, Maybe they've just never seen the character before in our series, but we give them the opinion so they can still access it. And this allows you in these books to expand how much vocabulary and characters the kids are reading, rather than just focusing on the new key vocabulary. We won't really want this to expand. So they have those three sets. So the black is what they've seen before. Red is the new key vocabulary that they're gonna be required to know for the next books. And all the gray, which typically is what they know orally already, but they haven't seen the characters yet. So there's still 10 units, so there's 10 total books of these short chapter books, all of a different stories, different context, lots of cultural things that have started to be a part of it uh, in a more intense way in these series. And that's where you're gonna start to really expand the kids to get to that intermediate level, which is that paragraph, paragraph length text and more extended stories so they can follow a narrative for a longer time. Now the last, the last series, uh, section that we have developed now is the intermediate two. So this is again, we're going to keep pulling those kids so they can read longer and longer stories. Now these are like chapter books, but we actually have five units in one story. So this is really where we're pushing kids to read a longer story in Chinese like they would be doing in their English classes where they're getting closer to short chapter books. Same idea, black characters are what they've seen before, red is what's new to that unit, and the gray is what uh, they already orally know or is a good word to know, uh, but we add the pinyin at the bottom. There's a strong uh, opportunity for the students to really uh, get differentiated here where some students are going to be learning all those characters and some just the red characters. So we, we think about the red characters as just the basic floor of what the students should know. So these are the ones they got to know the foundation before they move on to the next, next stories. Whereas the gray, they could learn as many of those as you wanted them to or as they can learn. So the intermediate two focuses more on kids being in China. So actually the stories revolve on students traveling from America to being in China. 
And so they are using their language in the Chinese context. So we've really moved from American context, like what kids are familiar with in the lower grades in that foundation, novice one, novice two. And we've slowly moved over to have more and more Chinese cultural topics uh, be the center and the theme of those stories. We think this is really important because the students are, now have the language to really be able to access uh, this, these new books and they also are able, more able to compare their own culture. They're more at an uh, advanced cognitive level to be able to do those comparisons. So that's the basic levels of that uh, proficiency builders. We're gonna, we are starting work on the next level which gets you to the AP which will focus a lot more on authentic materials. But now you can see kind of the basic framework of how these proficiency builders work and the, the, the different aspects within them to help you use them in your classrooms. Today we're going to be talking about another set of readers uh, called the theme-based readers. And we'll also talk about the YCT readers and these other read-alongs we have. So first about the theme-based readers and a little bit of background. So these were developed for lots of the international schools that teach the IB program, the International Baccalaureate program, but for young learners, the PYP themes. So that in the PYP program they have all these interdisciplinary themes that cover a wide range of topics. And so these uh, schools were worked with Mandarin Matrix to develop these readers to have Chinese books that cover a wide variety of topics and themes. And that's the first thing that I love about these books is the, the variety of what they cover. So as a, as a teacher, I've taught in immersion and in a FLESS program. And a lot of times you're, you're, you're needing a book about a specific topic. Maybe you're trying to connect with what your English teachers, partner teacher's doing or some other topic that the school is talking about at that time. So in this series, you can find a variety of topics to, to choose from. So maybe it's about weather. You could have a weather at a low proficiency and at a high proficiency range, whatever you want to do. This is amazing for differentiation. So if you're talking about rocks or weather or Chinese cultural things, you can be assigning kids books to read at a variety of proficiency levels. Maybe this student's reading a simpler book about weather and this one, maybe they're a heritage speaker, you're assigning them a more challenging book to read about weather but you still are on the same theme. So these books are divided up into different levels and they are, uh, these di they're indicated by different colors. So the colors show the proficiency level and as you go up they get harder and harder. And they, but they still follow the themes. You can see the themes on the back of the hard copy books. And if you're doing it on the online platform, you can follow the levels based on how they're arranged in uh, the platform. So what we like about the theme-based readers is how many topics they cover. They are a little bit different than our uh, proficiency builders in that they're not so systematic, meaning that the language you learn in one book, you won't necessarily see in another, see in another book or, or review. You're not, you won't necessarily review it um, in other books. Just have that recycled. But what's great about it is you can pull, those are good books for just pulling out randomly as opposed to the theme, uh, the proficiency builders where you don't, you want to stay in the sequence. Now the theme based readers, you, you grab these books and you can use them in whichever way you want. I really liked using them as read alouds. So I could start a class out or if I wanted to emphasize a certain topic, I could do the read aloud and read it from the board on a projector and I didn't have to purchase all these books to have that. Uh, in library in my class. I did have a few of these readers in my class that we'd have uh, as small group readings, but mostly I would do it as read alouds. And I really liked having these books for the differentiated enhancement of what I were teaching from the proficiency builders. So I had to take these books and assign them to kids at home. I had different groups on my online platform so I could assign books to different kids based on their interest level and their proficiency levels. So it's a really uh, good, flexible reading series that you can really hit lots of different student needs. On top of that, we have the YCT readers. These books were built based on the YCT uh, test, which is the Young Chinese Learner Test that the Chinese government puts together to kind of rate your uh, student's proficiency level. Now, we use the, the vocabulary list for those different tests, like YCT1, YCT2, YCT3, and we develop stories out of those vocabulary lists. So reading those stories at, uh, actually will help you understand the proficiency builder stories as well because they're based on frequency lists and, and we reference similar vocabulary lists. Now these books, they're really good for getting a student ready to do the YCT test or to just read a book in general. So it's just more books for you to be able to read and expand a student's vocabulary. We also have a bunch of other great books. Uh, we have the Pangu, which is a, more of a cartoon reading series. It's more uh, exciting kind of more dynamic uh, illustrations. We also have Chinese famous people which are biographies about Chinese famous people and we have also a, a pre-k kind of series called the Maxim Mace series which is, which is more of a bilingual text 
uh, for English and Chinese. And so we've, we're constantly developing more material. There's a lot of resources available to read. What's great about the online classroom, why, why we constantly encourage teachers and schools and programs and parents to purchase that, is you can get all those books all in one spot and you don't have to buy them all individually. And as you're using them, you can use what you want for that short time and be done with it and always have that library av available to you. And as always, we're always happy to answer more questions or, or help you understand maybe the best books and seri reading series for your school and, and the unique program that you have. So again, we're really uh, interested in contacting you and, and answering any more questions and helping you know which, which books and which series would work best for your school. So reach out to us and we'll be happy to answer any of your questions and we'll see you again later. Thank you.